Hi guys, my name is Derek now. Just shy of 50 years old. I'm just going to give you a brief history of my life, my fishing life. I was introduced to specimen carp fishing probably about 24 years ago by an Englishman from the UK. Um, that just ignited a whole new passion within me. Um, I've been fishing most of my life, but um, you know, I always had that, that urge to catch the bigger fish. And carp, carp are the ones, they they were sly, the bigger they are, the slyer they are. Um, a lot of people reckon they're not clever. I think they're very, very clever. Very careful feeders, especially if they've been caught once or twice. And you know, with that introduction, and as I sort of started finding my feet in the sport, um, I wrote a couple of mag articles for the magazines um, back in the day, 2001, I think it was. My first article to the tight lines. A um, couple of articles followed after that. I then went on to start a business where you know, I just want to bring forward and, and, and show people what I've learned. And I think the market was pretty hungry at that time um, for specimen, for this new facet of fishing. As pictures of the bigger fish started going into the magazines, a lot of guys wanted to understand or learn how to catch that or those, those you know, those fish. Um, and then, you know, we started a tour business, Carp Crazy, South Africa, where we started taking people out. Um, showing them what we've learned and just letting them just learn the basics that's what i always tell the customers is, is just learn the basics and from there you develop your own style of fishing um even myself and my styles are completely different from each other yet we we managed to get the fish on the bank you know so the touring business did well and then from there we started making dvds you know our aim and my you know my passion was just to to teach more and more anglers about catching big fish and the aim behind that was also fish care which was very important you know look after the fish put them on anuki mats carp care if they got wounds and that you know the fish care was was what we were trying to drum in um, from the beginning and uh, it's just grown over the years um, you know I've worked I work at West Accessories probably one of the biggest tackle shops in the country um, I run the specimen departments I've just been promoted to product development manager so for me my dream has just excelled and excelled um, and my passion is, is, is just getting better and better. You know, designing new equipment, specimen carp fishing equipment, trying to bring in stuff for our conditions. You know, Europe and England are, are a little bit different to us. Um, you know, we've got bigger waters that we target here. Uh, strong fighting fish, wild fish. I mean, you just got to look into a wild carp on a wild venue to know what I'm talking about. It's, it's an incredible feeling. And that, that's my passion. I have a passion for the bushveld. Um, I love our country and some of the finest waters are nestled in our African bushveld. Got wild animals roaming around um, and the chances of catching something special is, is it's an incredible feeling, you know, especially when you get that first magical run, the icebreaker, we call it the icebreaker. You know, you've done everything right, you found the right spots, your bait, your bait presentation, which is all important factors to take into consideration when you're targeting big fish. It's just, it's an incredible feeling, it really is. And that's my passion. I, I love those waters. I love the challenge of a big new water. My personal best is, is 46 pounds now, touch over 46 pounds, which I caught on my first trip to a brand, well, well, brand new water. It was a brand new water then. Nobody, everybody used to fish for bass there. Nobody knew, even knew there were carp in there. Um, you know, I waited two nights, but my personal best came from that water. I just, my first trip on that water, and it was, it was incredible, it was, it, you, you, a specimen angler will understand that feeling inside when that moment, when that, from when that fish took off and from when the time I saw it when it surfaced the first time, it's unbelievable. And, and, and we're trying to bring that into, you know, you guys, you guys that are, are, are trying to catch big fish. We, you know, we, what we're going to do here yeah, is, 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 is make it as educational as possible, that's all what I've always wanted to do. And you know, thanks to Anthony, and um, we've known him for a long, long time. He helped us in the beginning with Carp Crazy with our logo designs. You know, he just said, "Please, guys, let's get together. Let's let's bring the Carp Crazy name back. Um, start an adventure." And that's what well, that's why we are. We're at Hardy's Port Dam now, I believe. Probably some of the biggest carp in the country are swimming in this water. And um, you know, I thought that would be a great start for the adventure. It's been fishing well. We're just on a different spot to where most of the guys have been catching their fish. But um, I believe we're in for something new. It's like I say, it's like a 
new venue for us. We have fished it before, but not on this specific bank. So the challenges are there, the techniques that we need to apply are there. And um, yeah, like I said, we, we want to try and make it as educational as possible so that you're learning from what we are learning. Yeah, it's awesome to be here. It's awesome to be here with my brother and Anthony. And um, yeah, I just believe they are going for something special. As long as the wind stays away or blows in a certain direction, we had a bit of issues yesterday with ice and coming over into our swim. But we worked through it. We have for a couple of days. And um, yeah, sit back, enjoy it. I don't think you can enjoy it as much as we do, but we want to try and bring that experience to you and that feeling of accomplishment when we get that first magical run, the icebreaker. Right guys, so if you just look here behind me, you'll see um, there's a marker sticking out just past my rod, very close by, maybe about 30 meters out. I decided to try a 24-hour session fishing all three my lines in the margin, something I don't usually do. Um, but I've given it 24 hours, nothing's happened, and there's too much noise pollution on the bank, so I've decided now I'm going to move my marker out. Um, and go find a new place a little bit further out where there's a drop off into the river, the old river bed, and that's where I'll focus my attention for the next couple of days. This is the whole grassperk, it's sent a massive stick, it's so begin to move here to our country. The top last stick is I sent in all this. And this is the way for you to come with my line under the water. And there's still one stick here, so I have to move and I'll go on further and I'll So unfortunately there are some disadvantages to fishing out of PS Bodan. As many anglers will know, um, a lot of weed, a lot of ice and grass in the water. And then it just depends, you know, the luck of the draw, which way the wind blows. And, you know, it seems like during the day, the wind will blow from the back part, sort of cosmos side towards us, which brings all the weed across the lake. And then later on in the evening, like now, there seems to be a bit of a wind blowing from the back will blow it across there again. So unfortunately it just clips the lines and there's not much you can do about that. I brought the right hand line in now already. I'm just going to bring the my left hand line in and um, just give it a little while. Hopefully the wind will pick up a bit stronger than about an hour or so. It will blow it away and then gives us a chance to get the lines out again. Bit of a challenge um, but yeah we'll prevail and uh, see how we work through it day by day. Um, so I just want to explain the importance on a lot of venues of backletting, um, basically right in front of your rod tips, uh, two to three ounce backleads, heavy heavy backleads, so like as for example, if you can see uh, right in front of us is a whole blanket of hyacinth and grass and crap in front of us, um, and you can see Anthony's out there in the water, he had his lines up to try and avoid, to try and fish over the grass. But today I, te I actually tested it last night and I put my, my back legs on over here and they laid all the way through the grass to the bottom and when I lifted up my rods this afternoon there was just a few little strands of grass because the line is pinned down to the ground there's no movement on the top that's going to bother the line it's only in the front of your rod tips and that's quickly to, it's very quick to sort, it, sort that out and unlike Anthony and I he's, he's been battling for the last hour and a half his lines were up in the air my brother's rods were up in the air so they're both tomorrow they're going to backlet the lines as well and put it under the water so you're underneath the grass underneath the hyacinth and it 
lines. There's no disturbance on your lines. Very, very important. Um, it does help and gives you a little bit of peace of mind. Right, good morning guys, welcome to uh, what is actually a stunningly beautiful morning. The first of the mornings that we've had since we've been here. It's day four now and um, it's been tough but the conditions haven't really been perfect for fishing. We've had this high that's coming to our, like completely covered our whole area here for the first two days. So this is actually the second morning that we can actually say you know, we've been doing some serious fishing. Getting into our spots, uh, one fish out so far. But that's not, you know, we're not yet to catch more fish, we're not yet to get a lot of runs. Um, it's the specimen carp fishing and that's what the goal is, is to target the big fish. We get to catch records um, and the conditions are now starting to, to, prove, to prevail themselves. And also we had two cold fronts that came over uh, yesterday and then the day before. Two short little cold fronts that came through, that also does make the conditions a little bit difficult. You know, um, fish tend to turn off. Uh, but luckily we got a fish, I think got a fish out yesterday at about half past eight in the morning. So we'll see what the day brings, eh, but Yeah, it's been tough. So it's just got to prevail and just got to keep on keeping on. Um, I think we've, we've settled down into a couple of different spots that we found. <coughs> and you know, I think we've just got to be very patient with this game. It, it can be difficult at times. Other times they'll come one after the other. So like Mars says, the weather plays a huge role. It's a big factor. Um, obviously your barometer pressures that go up and down all the time. Yeah. Which are we still confident? Fish. Confident um, in our lines, in our methods, our baits. So we're just going to hang in there for a while and uh, just believe that um, it's going to change. It's got to change. Anthony's given us the icebreaker already. Um, so we've got a couple of days left and, and just I just do firmly believe that there's still some nice fish coming. Really, really big ones. I mean, like we said, like Marcel said, it's, we're not just for quantities. Um, you know, then you can just put out a lot of particles and fish in smaller baits. Um, that's not what we're here for. We're fishing big baits. Um, the bigger fish, mm -hmm. that's, that's the, um, the same of the game here. Yeah. I can besluit, you see Aria net die achter ons, waar die vis toch op baie bedrijwig is. Jy sien elke ochend, sien jy hoe draai die vis hier voor jou. Jy is nie eens ver uit nie, en is groot vis wat daar draai. Elke nou en dan draai die vis op, jy kom so mooi uit die water uit. So ek kan besluit, we gaan wachten tot so 12 uur toe vandag. Uh, dan gaan ik die lijnen inbring en dan gaan ek oorskuif sien toe. En kyk hoe dit gaan doen. As het lyk of hy area goed werk, dan denk ek gaan my tent sien toe skuif. En dan kan Marcel en Derek hier die hele area, dan kan hulle focus op die hele area. En dan gaan ek focus op hy stuk. En ek denk ek gaan, as ek daar is, omdat het so nabij is, um, ek wil nie baie geraas op die water heen nie. En ons is ook redelijk ver van hom af. So, ek denk het kan werk en ek gaan ingooi. Ek denk nie, ek gaan met die boot weer ingaan nie. Ek gaan dalk net ingaan met die boot, um, eerste net om te gaan kyk hoe lyk die area onder een lekker harde area gaan soek. Dalk een merker daar neersit en dan het ek my focuspunt. Dan kan ek my lijne ook stel um, vir die distansie. Dan kan ek hulle oorklip, ingooi, weer terugklip. Ek denk het gaan werk. Ik zeker ons gaan een paar groot als dat ook krijgen.
so ein Kastin in der Hand, Stock legt das ein. So, was ich tun ist, ich mache alle Stocke, und dann habe ich das auf der Hand, und merke, dass ich das auf der Hand und dann klappe ich das auf. So, dann wird ich auch die Kier, dass ich rein gehabt habe, und ich bringe meine Stocke in, und ich sehe die Überaus auf der Hand. Dann wird ich, ich merke das nicht, wie ich es aus, und ich werde auch die Kier, und dann habe ich das auf der Hand, und ich habe das auf der Hand, auch die Liebe. Ik ga gewoon voor maak. De aarde wat ik nu krijg, ja, ga ik begin al gaan uitzetten en nu naar die lijn uitvat. Dus kom ik bij schuif vielen wat ik hier ga doen. Dan zo begin kraal, boilies en zo paar solids inzet. En dan nog zo paar, dat ik in die crusher zet. Opkras. Wat is zo leuk? Wat is een goeie? Dan, dan is zo het dek tiger in bladwem. De tiger naar bladwem. Dat is een paar solids en zet. Wat je wel kan doen is, je kan er zo niet af te breken. Dat is lekker zacht. Dan heb ik een paar weer kruis. Ik heb niet te veel voer gooien. Maar ik wil het niet in een area lokken dat ik daar blij. Zo, neem maar lekker op. Aan de andere kant heb ik lekker groot benoffie. Um, was een pisang in uh, toffee. Lekker groot 35 mol olies. Dan gaan we hulle ook een beetje opbreek. Dat is een beetje stukken. Dat is opbreek. Dan kan ik daar ook twee van hulle gaan hier in die kruis verzet. Tiger geer, als bloedworm geer. Oké, dan die ene. Hier is ooit ons spartico mix. Ik hou dit hier van die water naar het zak. Het is zo mak. Daar is die partie komt niks, daar is tiger nuts, daar is hemzout in, daar is millies in. Die voet is doodlik. Dit is een beetje veel nie. Die raai in, dan neem ons hem op. Dan het ons tiger en bloodworm. Lekker sousie van hom, lekker duk. Baie, baie olie in. Ek kan sien die dikke zijn goed. Hierdie goed kaart is die bom. Een lekker stiek mix. Sla op. Yes, kijk hoe lijk het. Perfect, perfect. Ik heb die voer wat ik nou net aangemaakt heb, daar zo. Ik ga mijn rocket gebruiken om die voer uit te gooien. Zo so wat gebeurt is, ik maak hem vol, gooi hem in. Hij dop, hij hij slaat die water, dop om alles vol uit. En dan kan hij hem net weer in. Hij is die um, is de stok is nog steeds erg geklip. Zo so hij gaat niet altijd die klip slaan. Dan weet ik hij land precies elke keer op die rechte plek. Right guys, I just want to say um, 
Big thank you to Andre from Baitworks for supplying us with all our bait needs. Uh, he's got an awesome product and uh, if I, I can make a suggestion to get your hands out to him. He supplied us with all our baits and um, we've got the, the tiger nut which has got flavors, the range, then you've got all your oils which is to you know, stimulate your swim um, to uh, get the fish into uh, eating or feeding frenzy and then all the boilies uh, we've got obviously the 30 moles which are very 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 large boilies which we're using as hook baits um, which we hoping to pick up monsters with and then obviously the plain tigers as well which we're using as hook baits which has so far produced the first fish and I also want to show you the mix the ground mix which we have been using which is pretty pretty plain mix it's basically just your tigers your 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 mini to, to medium tigers your uh, maize your, your millies and then obviously your hemp seed. That's the only three things that we have got in our mix. Nothing too extravagant. Um, it's worked for us over the years and um, it's a very, very good uh, ground mix and we uh, believe it's going to do some wonders for us. As I came here with uh, one mindset and that's to fish only boilies. I um, had no particles prepared for myself. 20 more boilies to feed with and then 30 more hook baits. Um, I just thought that you know, obviously you, you, the boilies catch the bigger fish and that was the, my mindset and my goal. But the bank that I'm fishing on, I'm fishing on a slight drop off, but it's very rocky. And I think that there's crabs coming out there because uh, the last time, last couple of times that I've rebaited, -ba I found that, especially on my softer mulberry boilies, the 20 mils of crabs or something has had a go on them. Um, and then this morning I saw when Anthony brought out his line, all these boilies are off. There was only an artificial bait on top of that, which he used to balance his baits with. So it's a bit of a concern for me. Um, you know, it does take some time for a crab to chew up a 20 mil boilie, or even a, a 30 mil boilie. But, you know, it, it plays around with one's confidence. So now I'm going to sit here and I'm going to have my baits out and I'm going to wonder, are the crabs chewing them away? Or am I going to wake up in the morning and my bait is off? So. I've changed my game plan a little bit now. I've borrowed some particles from my brother. I'm going to put some particles out on my, my drop-off. I've got a lot of boilies out there already. And then I'm going to, I'll think of switching one line to a nice big tiger nut. And the other line, I might still keep a 20 mil boilie. I find that those, my pine nut boilies are, are harder than the mulberry ones. So, and also it's got a nutty flavor. So together with the tiger nuts, you know, that's, that's my mind, my mindset that I'm thinking now is I can still put a big bait out and I can still have a tiger nut out because I'm only fishing with two rods. So my options, I don't have many options to play with. So I'm um, just going to scoop up some, some particles now. Just go and feed up a little bit and then a little while later I'm going to change my lines. And when I bring that line out, I'll show you guys what I mean by how the crabs have been eating those boilies of mine. Nice. Maize, tiger nuts, and hemp seed. Just two scoops, I don't want to overdo it. There we go. And the plan is just to scatter this over a wide area, so I'm covering both my lines. So I want the fish to work for the baits. I'm not going to dump it in one pile so the school of them can just come in and vacuum it up in a matter of a couple of hours. I'm going to scatter over a wide area. So when I'm casting my baits into that, you know, they've got to work for their baits and hopefully come onto the hook bait a lot quicker. I'm still going to fish PVA bags because I am casting. So my plan, but obviously with a pine nut boilie, I'll, I'll still fish a nut, a crushed boilie PVA bag on that. And with the tiger nut line, I'm going to use those same boilies because of the tiger nut flavor or the nut flavor in them. I'll crush them up as well and use them as a PVA bag with the tiger nut line. So that's the new game plan. I've got confidence that it's uh, going to change things up a little bit. But yeah, let's get some bait out there. Get those fish set down, feeding. Okay, so um, my big purple boilies, as I thought, have been eaten by, I presume, crabs. Or it could be smaller fish species like the uh, resident kerpen, yeah? Um, what, me, what leads me to believe it's not crabs is normally crabs enjoy eating plastic items like your anti-tangle sleeves or the boilie stops, those kind of things crabs like to chew as well. So I don't know, it might not be crabs, it is a, a rock bank that I'm fishing on, so that's all, it's a smaller bream species. 
So I've changed that over. We're going with the Frutella Bakeworks Frutella Tiger Nuts. I've actually taken two, cut them in half, and then uh, joined them up to give me one nice big Tiger Nut. Uh, this is just presentation foam. There's a lot of plastic bags out there. So um, with me casting and that, when I'm casting, I want to make sure that my bait lays, and I'm not, once I've casted, I'm not going to touch it or drag it. So that uh, this hook, this will obviously break away once it's been in the water for a while leaving my hook to lay dead still on top of whatever debris there might be. We have seen once reeling the lines in every now and again are plastic bags. So I think there's a lot of plastic bags in this dam. So that's the reason for that. And then this is a pine nut boilies that I've crushed up and put into a PVA bag. So we're going to whack this one out there then I'll show you um, my second line. Okay, my second line, I'm uh, still going strong with the boilie. I decided I'm going to give this 30 mil a go. The nice thing about these boilies, they seem to be a lot harder than the others. So this is the pine nut from uh, Achis. Got uh, three loose boilies on there with a PVA tape. Again, we've put some presentation foam on. Just to try and get the presentation down properly. Um, the big bait and then PVA bag with some crushed. Some of those boilies are nicely crushed into a fine powder put into the PDA bag so bit of a chance but I did see that they are battling to bite into these um, nut pine nut boilies so that I can feel they're a lot harder so I'm um, gonna give it a go I still want to try and get something on these big baits I've got a tiger nuts on the other line so don't have much to lose it's a bit difficult when you're fishing only two rods your options are a bit limited but let's give it a go and see Right guys, so um, I've left these lines of mine in for 48 hours and um, every time I've brought a line in prior to this I've always had a plastic bag on the end of my line so it's a bit, bit challenging you know when drop placing your baits down you've got to do it so carefully to make sure you don't drag the hook into a plastic bag or anything because this place is filthy it's full 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 of filth there are plastic bags everywhere and also I'm going to change my strategy now um, let me just take this plastic bag off and I'll show you I was fishing um, a 30 more boilie as a ground bait with a, uh, a pop-up, which was also a 30 more, which I've, I've shaved down a bit to give it to, give, to uh, uh, create a critically balanced bait. Obviously, something is eating our boilies, our main, uh, you know, our hook baits off. So I'm not sure if it's crabs or if it's um, small kerpers or something. But after 48 hours, I've got no more bait left over there. So they've left the, the pop-up, but they've eaten the soft bait. So I'm going to change it now, I'm going to change all three lines to tiger nuts, something that crabs can't actually eat or get off that easily and then um, I'm going to redo all three of my lines now and then we'll see from there. I found a structure where Anthony was fishing, he's now moved, so I'm going to use his structure where he was, which is a very good structure, it's a, it's a very rocky, hard ground, um, which is great for placing baits and it's a drop off down into the old river bed. So I'm going to use two lines, I'm going to fish them there. And then my left hand line, I've been, I've been watching the water and about 50 meters behind that marker, there seems to be a line that the fish are patrolling in. And it's very important to watch the water. When you wake up in the morning, try and get up as early as possible and keep a good eye on the water and you can see where the fish are patrolling. It's, it's, uh, you know, fish finders, to, to see fish on a fish finder, that's not what you're looking for. Yes, it's nice to see them in the area, but they don't always stay in the area. You need to find the patrol area that they swim up and down. If you can locate that, then you find a good spot and then you'll, you'll be into some good fish. So I've been monitoring that and watching it the whole day and I'm going to put one line out there. I'm first going to go see if I can find something there. What is the, why is there so, many, so, so much activity there? And then um, hopefully it's a good spot and I can place it back down. I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on that one. I thought I'd talk about this genius product that Anthony brought here, courtesy of 4x4 Mega World. 
It's one of their desert products. It's called the LED camping light. Um, it's like an extending camping light. What I like about it is, with us that are filming, um, you know, when you, especially if you're getting fish at night, you don't want to have light in your eyes constantly. You can't see your, your photos come out a bit blurry or too bright. Um, this is perfect for when you've got your fish out, you've got your fish down on the bank, you can adjust this to see the actual light fitting itself at various angles. So basically what I like about it mainly is once it's on its extender, the height, um, and you run it at a sort of parallel with the ground, you've got a light coming down, almost like the sun is shining down from the top, you've got this light coming down, so there's nothing in your eyes. And it sort of lights up your whole campsite, it lights up your whole swim while you're weighing your fish, photographing your fish. It truly is an incredible product. So let's go through it quickly and see what you get with it. Nice, hard, handy carry bag. That's the LED light itself. So as you can see, you can adjust it to whatever angle you want. A lot of guys don't want lights in their eyes all the time. Some guys that still like to put lights on the, on the water, you know, looking at their policemen, the conventional guys, this will work for that as well. But that is what I mentioned earlier. You've got this sort of light from the top. It shines down on the campsite and not into your faces. Just adjust, as you can see it's telescopic. Nice solid aluminium. I mean that is way, way above your head, way above your tent, above the gazebos. It really, really is an incredible product. I mean, you just slide it back into its position. If you want it lower, you can put it in various positions. And bring it down. It comes with a nice peg that you peg into the ground and you actually put the lights, the, the bottom section of the pole into that and that's what helps it to stand sturdy, upright. The cable to run from the top, you can extend it a little bit longer, depends where your batteries and that are for that. A handy remote, which will just switch it on and off, you can flash it, it comes with various items that you can actually do with the light itself. And then the last thing about it is it comes with two different power points. So this is for your normal batteries if you needed to clip it onto the positive and the negative section of the battery. And it comes with a cigarette lighter fitting should you want to plug it into the car or some of your battery packs do come with those fittings on top of them already. You can just plug it into the actual cigarette lighter holding. Um, so it's, you know it's, it's versatile, it's easy to use and it just it's just a phenomenal product. This is just a 360 pivoting leg depending on where you want to position it, almost like a suction cup, so you can put it against something hard and then suck down on it if you don't have the peg or if the ground is too hard for you to push this peg into. Really, really great product. You've got to go out and get one of these. It's, 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 it's just changed your campsite completely, it changed your fishing completely, and like I mentioned earlier, for us that are, are filming, um, if we get fish at night, you, you don't want the, the light in your eyes, you want a really good lit up spot around you almost like the sun is shining um, to get great photos to handle the fish properly and obviously for the filming now what can we say um, the wind has turned the wind is bringing all this weed towards us again it's challenging it's frustrating you know, if you make out a piece put down your next target venue keep in mind that the way the wind blows is uh is the luck of the draw you know so makes for tough fishing it's challenging you can really see it coming from a mile away there's nothing you can do about it you just got to sit and watch it come through and then um, hopefully tonight the wind will change again and push it back to where it came from and then go and bag the people on that side of the lake but uh, yeah it's, it's, it's frustrating stuff it really is frustrating but we uh, never know it might bring the fish as well but we'll work through it we'll just persevere and keep on keeping on all right guys, I'm going to show you one of the rigs that we're using at this venue at the moment. Um, so many different names for the rigs, uh, a lot of people have got different styles, you know, everybody's got their own style, this is something that I like to use. Um, it's, it's a safety rig, it's a stiff rig, it's a, it's a blowback rig and it's a spinner rig all in one. Um, what you will need, look there's a lot of different products that I'm using, I'm a variety of Corda, Ridge Monkey, Christen, 
uh, Fox. So I'm not going to go into detail of what you need to get. You just, you know, buy whatever product you feel is working for you and then you can use it. But I'm going to show you what exactly you would need. Um, so you would obviously need uh, uh, some, some, crimp, some crimps. I've got the quarter ones here, the size two or size four hook. Um, I prefer bigger hooks when I'm fishing because uh, we're obviously targeting bigger fish and I don't want my hook to bend open. Some heat shrink, uh, 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 anti-tangle sleeve, and then swivel, size four swivel, and then a small little ring swivel, and then also a clip-on swivel, and then obviously your safety clip and sleeve. And then what I'm gonna use is the quarter boom 35 pound stiff fluorocarbon to make the business end with, and we'll start with that. So first we take the hook and we'll take the clip-on rig uh, swivel, put it on from the front. Sorry, let me just put my glasses on. Uh, now with age, eyesight is not as good as what it used to be. And then just take, um, because it's got, it's open there at the back end, just take a pliers, or long nose pliers actually, and just close that little loop there so it doesn't come off. Not all the way, just enough so that it doesn't slide off. There's still a little bit of movement in the hook, but it's closed off and it can't come out now. Very, very, very important. Then you take your heat shrink and you just measure the distance that you want to cover that with to give you a bit of extra safety and a bit of extra confidence to keep everything in place as well. Just a little bit to cover the eye of the hook and then right up to, oops, sorry, just jumped out of my hand there. And then right up to cover this part of the clip-on swivel. So your, your ring and your spin, there must still be a spin in the swivel. So obviously that's very, very important to create the spinning in this, you know, the spinning motion. So that's the length that we want. And we'll just cut it off. And we'll just slide that over the hook nice and gently without piercing it. Always remember guys that your hooks need to be flaming sharp. I'll show you just now to, uh, a way to keep them, always keep them sharp. It's one of the most important parts of, of your equipment to have a very sharp hook. There we go. And you can just wet this little section over here just to give it a little bit more lubrication to go over nice and easily. And then as you can see, I've taken it all the way up to that end of the swivel and I'm left with a nice little piece of yeah so it gives you that curve so I don't have a care I'm not going to do I'm not going to heat it up for you and shrink it for you but when you do heat it up just bend it a little bit down like that so it gives you that bit of a curve it gives you a better hook hold you know when the fish picks up it gives it a nice in the bottom lip it gives it a nice comfortable hook hold so you can be uh, secure and confident that you're not going to drop a fish it's the last thing you want as well so the next part is then you'll slide on your small mini little rig swivel over the point of the hook again and then your little rubber bead which then creates your anti-jet system again over the point of the hook slide it over nice and comes just be gentle take your time there's no need to rush and then i like to fish it basically almost where your bob is sticking out just past that so your hook bait will basically hang the tight onto then and that's what it'll look like. Some guys fish it high up, some guys fish it in the middle. It's all your own style. You really develop, develops their own style. Just find your own style. You don't necessarily have to follow mine. It's what works for me. Okay, so now that's done. So the next part we'll measure out our fluorocarbon stiff hook link. I like to fish with a 30. If I'm not fishing, usually I would like to fish combi links. If I'm not fishing a combi link, then from, this, from the lead to the hook, I like about 30 centimeters. I like a nice long hook because I'm dropping and keeping the hook as far away from the lead as possible. Because I'm not casting, so I don't, I'm not worried about getting, getting tangled up. So that's 30 centimeters. Then I take it an extra 10 centimeters away from that where I cut it, because now I'm gonna still use the section to crimp with. Oops, wrong tool over there. Cut it off and now, this is a 35 pound, it's a 0.65 fluorocarbon. Very, very stiff, very, very strong, and very, very um, high in abrasion. So then you need to obviously, 
I'm like again, I'm not mentioning product names. This is a quarter size seven crimp to go in a size 6.65. If you're going to use a thinner floral carbon, then go with a size six crimp. Uh, but just get make sure your crimp is very, very closely matched to the line that you're going to crimp. So when you do crimp it, make sure that, that then it's got a hole. It must be a hole. The last thing you want is you want a big fish and it's your record fish, and that crimp comes loose, you are going to be gutted. Trust me. Um, all right, so we'll take the crimp out. These are very, very small items you're working with, um, so you need steady hands and good glasses. Okay, so I've taken the one end through the crimp. You see it slides quite nice and easily, but it's, you, can, you can feel there, it's, it's against the, the mono. Then take it around the big rig. Ow, oh, at least it looks you know, sharp. And then bend it around and then take it through the second hole of the crimp. Just a little bit so the tail end starts sticking out and then you start tagging on the longer end to bring it down to where you want it. Now remember, don't close it all the way. Just bring it out like that. I like to keep it like that so there's a lot of movement. So it adds to the anti jack. So when the fish picks up, and he tries to blow back the, the, the bait when he, feel, when he feels there's something else or something strange in his mouth. This will give an anti-blowback, so that'll keep the hook forward, plus this motion will also give an anti-blowback. Plus it's giving a lot of play in the water. Um, you know, uh, it's a very, 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 very effective system for great hook hold. And that's the, the size. Some, a lot of guys make it smaller, they put, when you bring it right up to the, rig, uh, uh, right up to, to the, the big ring, or they make it bigger. It's entirely again once up to you, you know, once again up to you, it's your, it's your style how you want to fish. But that's the size I like to keep it. Then you hold this end with this finger, or if you're left handed, right, I'm left handed, so I hold it with that hand. And then you'll see on the, this is also once again a quarter crimper, crimping tool. There's a size small and a size large, small and large. This is obviously now a size 7, 0.07, so it'll be the large. If you go to the, the, the 0.6 crimp, it's a small. So we'll go into the large one. And we'll slot it in to that slot, make sure it's slotted in nice and firmly and then just clamp down lightly and make sure it's in both the top and the bottom, inspect everything and then push down hard. You can get two hands in there and make sure it is properly closed Then that's what it should look like. So that's basically your business end. Right, so now we'll go on to the other end of the, of the hook link which is not going to be the swivel, but before we do that, I like to put an anti-tangle sleeve on. It just creates a lot more um, uh, motion, like straight down motion when you're dropping a line to let everything fall down nice and flat. It helps with that. So we'll just put that on in the meantime, get it down to the bottom there, and then we'll go on to the next crimp. Put it into the second hole again, and once again, I like to keep it the same as I do with the business end. It just creates a lot more freedom with a link. Although I'm going to put an anti-tangle sleeve on anyway, so that doesn't matter. So I'll close this one a little bit smaller. All right, so that's what it looks like. Again, hold the, this end in your one finger, nice and straight. Get the crimping tool, and remember on a large for your 0.7. Get it in the slots, both ends, double check that it's right, and then you can apply pressure, and then Bob's your uncle. Okay, so that's basically what it'll look like, and now I'm going to switch the kettle on here next to me, and then I'm going to pull everything straight and then shrink this down for you so you can see exactly what it looks like. While I'm doing that, I'm just going to prepare the top end of the rig so long. So I've got, once again, it's a Christen lead core, um, 40, 45 pound lead core. I like to use a meter, roughly a meter, for the top of my rig. I didn't measure it exactly, but that's roughly a meter. Get that ready. 
and I can actually do one splice while they're waiting for the kettle to get so long. I'm going to splice this for you. So what you do is you take the core, the inside, sometimes it's lead, sometimes it's non-lead, depending on the product. And you just pull it out, keeping your hands at the bottom of the so you don't lose the angle, you know, the, the, um, the actual braid on there, keeping it there and you can just break it off and then you can let go, yeah, then it should all shoot back nicely and give you a nice little section to work with without the core inside. Take the splicing needle, you find the point of that core and you just hook it in and then you slide it inside. Work it nice and smoothly and gently at first and then it should just go in nicely. There we go. Take it about halfway, pull it out of the lead core. Take your business end swivel, the top swivel, put it through there and then hook it onto the point of the, probably on about two millimeters away from the, you know, from the end, otherwise it's just going to unravel and, and pull out. And you just push it over the point and then you close this end and then you start, keep it, keep it there and you start sliding this down, otherwise it's going to fall off. And when you got it there, you just slowly with these fingers just work it and then it should go in. Some guys battle with it, but it's actually quite easy once you get the hang of it. This one you can close pretty much all the way because your safety clip and sleeve is going to go over here. And then you pull it out. And it sounds like the kettle's about to boil. So you pull it nice and tight like that and there we go. Then we take the other end, let me just burn this a little bit. Closed. Again, it's not working with me. Let me take this off. Okay, we'll deal with it now. Looks like the kettle is boiling. So, take, as I mentioned before, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first shrink down. And remember, I'm, uh, I did tell you to hold this end and then bend it a bit before you start steaming it to give you that curved effect. Give it some time, do it both sides, make sure that it's shrunk down properly. And there you have it. Nicely curved, nicely bent. And once the fish picks this up, there's no way it's letting go. There's just no way this is gonna hold without a shadow of a doubt. Then you take the fluorocarbon, pull it as tight as possible from the swivel and the hook, and you just roll it over the steam keeping the pressure on both ends and if you do it correctly it should only take one go without this kettle falling and burning me and then it pulls it straight so that's what it looks like beautiful rig very very effective known to catch a lot of big fish so let's just put this off move that out of my way and then carry on with the lead core. We've got the business end done, shrink down nicely, ready for action and straightened out. Let's get the top end of the lead core sorted and the safety clip and sleeve on. So once again we'll just pull the core out. This time I'd like to take a little bit more out, probably about 10 to 12 centimeters. Cut that off and then let it go and just push it all back down. Then you should have a nice longer strand to work with. Again, take a splicing needle, push the point in, and then push the, push the point in, and then get your head in there. There we go. Slide it down again, but halfway. Get the needle out. And now we just, there's no swivel or anything, we're just creating a loop. Put this end back over again. And I'm going to close it, hold it there, and then push this down so that you put it in, hold it into place. And just wiggle it around a little bit. So 
Sometimes it works nicely, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, just have patience. Don't pull too hard because this is how you break splicing needles. There we go, it starts going through. So just that size, very, very small little loop. Just enough to get your leader line through to make a knot onto it. Pull it at and out, get your splicing needle out. Well, almost pulled it a little bit too far now. But luckily you haven't pulled it tight, so you can still pull that little, put it a little bit out. And there we go, that should suffice. Nicely, then you can hold that and then pull it through. And there we go, top end is now also done, where your needle will go onto. So that is it. Now we'll put the safety clip and sleeve on. Put your baiting needle, not your spicy needle, your baiting needle through. Nice thin one. Just hook it onto there and then pull it through. Gently always does it. Again with a towel rubber, put it through the top. Hook it on and pull it through. And then that is that. So then here we go. That's basically, like I said, about a meter long lead core, all the way down to the hook. We're anti oh yeah, anti tangle, we just want to slide it up slightly more. And there we go, against the swivel. Some guys like to put it over the swivel, but I still like to keep the spin on the swivel. That'll create like an anti-tangle when you're dropping your down and then it's your business end. So when, you, when you're lowering your bait, it'll lay down, so you down like that. So now, you can put a lead on. A lot of the leads that are getting made are very, very good. This is a six ounce lead. Some guys use five, some guys use seven, some guys use eight ounce, le uh, eight, eight ounce lens, uh, leads. It just all depends on your style once again. Uh, but a lot of them have got silver swivels on them. So what I like to do is take another tail rubber and just cut off almost about half of the tail rubber away and use the bottom end and put it over the swivel. This does take also a little bit of patience and effort to get it over. So again, not all the way over there. Some guys, again, like to put it all the way down to the bottom of the ledge. So there's no movement whatsoever, but I like to have a little bit of movement in there also. Um, and then your, obviously your swivel on the top end is over, which is then gonna go over your safety clip. And then you slide your sleeve over. First you clip that in. Clip it into the back of your safety clip so you can see the eye of the um, swivel is gone and you just slide this over we like to drop our leads most of the guys do um, it's just for safety reasons so when the fish picks up that it doesn't swim into a snag because can you imagine a fish dragging you're playing a fish with this seven ounce lead or six ounce lead hanging on the end of its lip like this so it's adding more pressure to the fish and it's creating a problem when you're going to get into a snag or a, 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 a rock or a stump or anything like that. If this lead gets stuck in there and there's no way for it to get off, then that fish is gone. It's gonna snap this hook link, it's gonna break the hook, it's gonna be gone. So basically, the idea is when it picks up, let me hold it from this end up here. When the fish picks up, you know, you normally pick up with quite a jerk and then you'll rip and the lead will come off and basically you'll just be lead left with this and it'll be you and the fish. There'll be no lead or anything in between. Okay, so that's very, very important, guys. Um, yeah, and that's basically that. That's the whole rig. That's what we're using. It's a winner. And uh, obviously just apply your own styles to it. And um, yeah, enjoy your tight line. Hi guys, I'd like to speak to you about a awesome new product that is coming from um, Avid Carp. Uh, it's the Avid Carp Cot XL. And as the name suggests, it's a extra large, um, very, very soft unhooking mats for your, for your fish, for very, very big fish. Um, so basically, I'll just quickly I'll show you how it folds up. So 
it tucks away nicely like that. Your legs go in there. Both sides. And then it folds up and it comes into this nice little carry bag with handles. Nice and compact. Very, very sturdy. So, the same with you to open it up. Legs come up and just clip onto the bar on top here. On both sides. Quick and easy. Down it goes. It also has a space where you can put a tent peg or a peg on either side to camp it down if you are certain that that's going to be your, you know, your waste station and your unhooking station and your calf care. It's a brilliant, brilliant piece of equipment for calf care. Um, your fish definitely cannot get out of here and they are guaranteed to be safe, you know, especially when they're jumping around and uh, while you're taking a hook out and doing your calf care. Um, I definitely suggest you get your hands on one of these as soon as possible and you can get them through Tackle Pro SA. Um, www.tackleprosa.com there's another awesome piece of kit I'd like to chat with you about. It's the Avid Safeguard two-piece 42-inch landing net. Um, awesome, awesome piece of equipment. It's a, uh, I've, there is a one-piece and a two-piece. I've opted for the for the two-piece. Um, it's an ultra-light carbon fiber, uh, and it does slot the back end slots in. You can actually use it as a one-piece when you're on the boat. If the long, the, you know, if the long pole is too too much for you to handle. I actually keep it as the one because I prefer if the fish you know, tends to swim away from the boat. I need that ex extra extension to be able to get to it. It's got a very, very, very robust and strong spreader block, which I like because uh, this is where most landing nets tend to fail is on your spreader block because of the pressure from the landing net, that, landing net that's pushing out. Um, I'll show you right now what I mean. Just get it in here. It's very, very quick and easy to set up. And there we go. It's in, it's set up, it's 42 inch. It's got an awesome elastic that runs through here. Ultra light, it's super, super. It's one of the lightest, lightest landing nets I've used before in my life. It's got a nice camo netting for all you camo, you know, your avid camo fans out there. Definitely get your hands on one of the, uh, a piece of this equipment. Like I said, it does come in a one piece and then a two piece, and it also comes in its nice safety carry sack that you can put it in you can get these pick these up again like i said from tackle pro sa in south africa www.tacklepro.sa.com So I can just show you there where the hook was on the bottom lip, on the bottom left hand side of the lip. So we'll just apply a bit of carb care. Carb care. This is a, they get many different kinds of carb care, uh, you know, carb clinic. It's to help them, their wounds heal. It's almost like mercury crumb for, mercury crumb for us or dental for us. That's been applied to its lip. This is the one from Christen. Very, very good product. So you just open it up and just spray some. Right there where the hook was. Put a generous amount and then just rub it in nice, massage it in nicely into the lip. Well guys, all good things have to come to an end unfortunately. Sitting on the campfire here. It's been an epic couple of days. It's had ups and downs. But yeah, that's part of the parcel of targeting big big fish on, on waters you've never fished before and um, it's challenging rewarding um, it's just a journey it's an exciting journey and it's just what keeps the passion ignited within us it's just 
you know, just seeing each and our what we do and how we've changed things and to accomplish what we've accomplished. It's just a it's epic and that's what we do, that's why we do it. We make it educational, we try to make it as fun as possible. But I just want to take this opportunity to thank my sponsors, Jackie International and Wolf Fishing, with some accessories. Um, they've uh, been kind enough to donate some gear for us using a lot of the products. Yeah, Adam Tail as always very very good product. Good job, uh, it's been epic with you boys. Yeah, and it certainly has been um, it's been awesome. It's been amazing, it's been epic, it's it's been an uh, absolute challenge uh, at this venue, uh, particularly with uh, this hyacinth and the grass and the snags and you name it, we've had it all. Um, but it's been it's been really really awesome. I've had a great time with all of you. Um, and it just keeps us coming back, you know, it keeps us coming back every time and uh, it keeps excitement going, you know, looking forward to the next trip and looking forward to the next shoot and where's the next fish going to come from, but it's been great, it's been an awesome thing, I hope, I hope we have educated you guys and um, helped you guys with you know, a few things that you might not have known and that have learned from this, uh, which we certainly have learned because we've, we've changed so much from the time that we arrived here, we came here with ideas and now here's what we're going to do, what we're going to do from previous experience at other venues, but this venue was totally different. Totally different. I mean, I fished out of Bespa Dam before, but on the other side of the dam there, it was, it had its challenges, but nothing like this. And then um, I just, I would like to take this opportunity to, opportunity to thank Andre from, or Andre Minar from Baitworks, that has supplied all our bait needs when I said, when I say all of our bait needs, he really went out of his way. Uh, we ran out of bait because we had, you know, we had to move spots so many times, all three of us have had to change. We fed a spot and fed a spot and it didn't work for us, so we've changed again. He actually um, cooked bait for us back in Johannesburg, sent it through the driver to, to one of his field testers on the other side of the lake. They drove it over, drove it over with their boat <laughs> and brought it to us, you know, in a bucket ready, hotly prepared. So, um, <clears throat> really thank you Andre for going out of your way. Awesome baits, awesome product. Get your, get your bait works. Um, it really, really works. And then um, also to Avid, you know, for supplying us with, you know, the pod and the unhooking mats, landing nets. Um, a lot of nice gear, awesome product, well priced. Um, so be on the lookout for Avid. It's a new upcoming product that's going to take the market by store. Yanni, yes, here give us now for you a challenging clip. I had a long glass sword to work on the trip. I had all three times scuffed. I had all stomp out the water hole with my line on fast to sit it. I had the water in the hole. It was hard to work, very hard to work. Um, I can now and then, I think you will lay your line in the water. I think you have a new type of manier on your ass near to sit. Dit was, dit was, dit was moeilijk, maar dit was baie lekker. Yes, ons het rarig baie geleer, ons het self baie geleer op die trip. Um, ons gaan dit definitief weer doen. Um, hierdie is die eerste van baie wat nog gaan kom. Ons gaan baie verskillende damme hengel, ons gaan alles methodes vir julle wees wat ons doen, hoe kom ons dit doen, hoe kom ons dit daar doen. Um, ons gaan uitvind hoe hengel die ander ouwens daar so en ons eie manier inbring Last, that was by 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 great carp in this land. That was absolutely great, great, great monsters. We are after them. We are going to take them. I would like to thank you for the sponsors that we have sponsored. These products, they have given us the nicest equipment. These lights that are on us, the tent. They have been out of the way for us. They have been doing all their products. En hulle voer hulle eie producte in. Ek is baie baie blij dat hulle ons kon sponsor met dit. Ja, en dan OBC Chicken. Hulle het al ons vlees vir ons gegee. Metaan het vir ons ijs en brood gegee. En dan wil ek net dankie sê vir die cameraman. Dit is van Big Bank Productions. En dan is daar EBB, dit was in Productions ook. En dankie vir die kijkers. Right guys, I just want to tell you about an awesome experience that just happened now, you know, um, 
there's one sponsor that that I forgot to mention, and that is our Father God. And I just want to thank Him. You know, without Him, none of this can be possible. Without Him, none of our waters can be possible. None of this nature that we, you know, we experiencing all these beautiful animals around us. Um, but just thank you, thank you for watching, and thank you for supporting us always. And we'll see you guys again soon.